Hi, my name is Dr. John Bouillard, and I want to talk to you today about iodine deficiency. You know, the World Health Organization claims that about 72% of the world's population is deficient in iodine. Back in the 1920s, when the American doctors discovered uh, iodine deficiency, they started putting iodine in the salt. And they used it in the meat industry, in the dairy industry, to clean the equipment. In the 1960s, they put iodine in bread as a dough conditioner. So we had lots of iodine available in our diet. However, since then, uh, in 1980, they took the iodine out of the bread as a dough conditioner. They don't use it in the meat and dairy industry anymore. And very few people use regular iodized salt. And there's lots of issues with salt. We're told not to use salt. So as a result, the average American has about 50% less iodine in their bloodstream uh, today than they did 30 years ago. So it's a significant issue. You know, not too long ago, I had a patient who had uh, a thyroid problem most of her adult life. And she came in here one day, and out of the blue, her thyroid numbers were all over the map again. And I had exhausted pretty much all the knowledge I had trying to bring this back into balance. So I called a friend of mine. His name was Ryan Drum, a PhD researcher from the Northwest who's a thyroid expert. And I asked Ryan on the phone, I said, do you have any idea what could cause this? And he said, did she buy a new car or new furniture recently? And our mouse dropped. She had just bought a new car and new furniture, and she was just lamenting about the fact that she couldn't close the windows in her apartment because the furniture smelled so bad. And Ryan said that the thyroid is the most vulnerable organ to this toxic environment that we live in. Iodine is a halogen. And as a halogen, it, there, there's also iodine, uh, chlorine, chlorine, fluoride, bromide, they're all halogens. So when you look at the other halogens that are competing for these receptors, there are quite a lot of them. Chlorine is in pretty much most of the water we drink. It's in jacuzzis and pools we go into, and we're constantly being exposed to chlorine, and it competes with these receptors. Fluoride, for example, was used in the 1950s to literally suppress thyroid function for hyperthyroidism. So people were given fluoride back then to suppress their thyroid. And the amount that they used back then is very similar to the amount that many people are exposed to, whether it be from the water we drink or the toothpaste that we use or the fluoride treatments we get that there's a lot of fluoride in the diet that actually can literally suppress the thyroid. In addition to that, back in 1980, when they took the iodine out of the bread as a dough conditioner, they put bromide in there as a dough conditioner instead, which competes with, again, with the iodine receptors. So we have a significant issue of iodine deficiency that sets us up for toxic exposure. Ex example, I wrote an article recently called the Protect Your Breast. And in that article, we talk about how now, certain toxic estrogens are protected from uptaking into the breast tissue, and high toxic estrogens are linked to breast cancer. Um, so we have to look at the iodine levels, which, by, by the way, there's more iodine in your breast tissue than there is in your thyroid. In fact, there's iodine receptors all over your body, and it's a systemic network of iodine that we're looking at, not just only in your thyroid. So I highly recommend looking into uh, your iodine deficiencies. Please take a look at this article associated with this video where I show you how to determine whether you are, in fact, iodine deficient. Please uh, take a look at the article. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Bigard.